Welcome to Canterbury Life for Thursday. I'm your host, Annie Roach. We've got the Warbirds over Wanaka giveaways to give away still. And if you ring Mary Ann, you can be in to win. The number is 3777033. Or you can go to the website www.ctv.co.nz and be in to win two family passes to Warbirds over Wanaka. It's going to be fantastic, so you might want to get in on that. But today on the show, we find out a great initiative to recognise the volunteers in our community. And Marcus Gibbs takes a look at Canterbury's heritage clocks. But first up, it's an absolute honour to meet author Nairi bowen Lilly. Hello, Nairi. It's lovely Hello, to Annie. meet you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Pleasure. Um, this is no ordinary story. This. This book that you've written, The Wahini, mm -hmm. A Survivor's Tale, you're actually one of the survivors. Okay. Um, what an incredible story to write. What made you want to write it all down? Well, I never thought about writing it. It was just the fact that a few years ago, well, probably about good seven years ago, I met Ross Peniolda. He, he is now the um, deputy principal at Hillmorton High School. But prior to that, he worked under the Māori education umbrella. And because when he heard that I was a survivor, he insisted that I you know, write this, because he said it's New Zealand history on New Zealand waters. Yes. And to his knowledge, he said that he didn't believe that there was any storybook written by a young survivor on the, you know, on the um, school shelf. So he felt that it was a story that needed to be told. So really, it was his prompting, not mine. And w what did you think when he first mentioned it to you? Were you keen? Um, oh, sorry, I had to think about it. I, well, obviously, I must have been keen because I went ahead with the challenge. But, and delighted that I did because, you know, you, one memory opens up another memory. And, and, and I felt it was very therapeutic in the end because, you know, like way back in 1968, um, you know, they didn't have, you know, when tra <coughs> tragedies happened or traumas happened, you, you, didn't, you never had that counselling on hand to sort of support you through. And because and it was a subject that was shut down in our family home because it, the fear frightened our parents so much. And because at that time, my mother was heavily pregnant with my youngest brother, John. And so, of course, you, you, you never had a voice. You never spoke about it, really, so I suppose. May I yeah. ask you how old you were when it actually happened? I was 14. Yeah. You were 14. Mm. That is, mm. That's such a tender age anyway. Mm. Absolutely. And, um, you know, to feel that you, you can't express this, you know, terrible tragedy that happened, it must have been um, really hard for you. It was. It was very difficult, and but as I said, you know. So I really thank, you know, I really thank Ross Penny Order for, for giving me that opportunity. But you know, and then the and the other therapeutic thing that was really good at, because I was more distraught, I think, at the time. Well, not at the time, but soon after was the loss of my suitcase of clothes because I packed my very best clothes, and because um, so I had my book launch last July, and I enjoyed redesigning, re you know, recreating my suitcase of clothes and I had my nieces and granddaughters strutting down the, you know, down the runway and, and that was, that again, was very good. And, but yeah, so I say there's a lots of great things and I really, as I said, I can't thank Ross Pignotto enough for, for prompting the issue or prompting the, you know, the opportunity to write the book. Mm. And how wonderful for you to be able to um, finally express it and talk about it in a way um, from your writing but also um, the, the people that must want to talk to you because you've written a book now um, so you get to actually do that more than once anyway yes, don't you? Yes. Well just coming here today like for example regrettably the book was already in print when um, Tate's Electronics, what well, I think it's now Tate's Communications because so Angus Tate, well, you know Angus at that stage he was on the, he was on the way in himself and so his family they allowed me to write my story, write his story sorry and which I put into the program and so, and so coming down here today and seeing Tate's communications, I thought, oh, that is a, it's a huge memory. You know, it's been so close to, to, the, um, to the anniversary of the Waheni, which is on the 10th. That's right. And so we've actually got um, a launch coming up. Well, you've got a launch, yes, I should yes. say, coming up. On the 12th up. of April. Mm. On the 12th of April. And it's at Flaxton Manor. Yes, it is. Yes. At 2 o'clock. It sounds really lovely. Mm. Like you can have a picnic on the lawn. Absolutely. And talk to you about your Absolutely. book. Absolutely, both books. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to it. Actually, I am, you know, because I want to involve families. Because as I said, for me as a young girl, I saw some dreadful sights. You know, I saw children being thrown over the, over overboard. You know, thinking the parents thinking that they would have more of a chance of surviving. And and it, there was a lot of children lost that day. And so for me, having relaunching the, the Waheni book on the it flexed in manner. It just you know, I want to make it a family day out and just pull families together. 
Mm. How wonderful mm. um, to do that. Uh, I mean, just to write that book in itself, you're sharing mm. such a, a lot of personal stuff um, from that time with mm. so many people. But I think it will be a wonderful therapeutic gift for others who might have yes. been through something and, and maybe they can relate to something that, that you yourself have been through. Absolutely. And it's, it's lovely because everybody has a memory. Like, you know, like even coming here today, you know, your receptionist, she remembers very well. She had close friends. Yes. You know, that had a major loss on that, on the Waiheni. So yeah, wherever you go, there's always somebody that knew somebody or was that somebody that was on that ship. Mm. Well, it's lovely to have your mm. connection with it. Mm. And like I say, it's such an honour to talk to you. Thank you. Um, your other book that you wrote, Recipes mm. for Disaster, you know, what first came to my mm. mind was, I wonder if that's got a lot of comfort food in it. Because I think Absolutely. that's what I would want. Has it really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. And that was just an extension too from this book because I, in the, near the end of the book, I, I write this rhubarb recipe that my father, he used to make this rhubarb. Oh, yeah. He had rhubarb and he'd, he'd make rhubarb ice cream. And, and because working for Michael, I worked for, I say Michael Lee Richards, I worked for him for over 30 years. And because. So um, there's a lot about yes, him and your yeah, connection our relationship in the book. together. And, yes, oh, yes. How, we'll, we'll have to have a look yes, at both yes. of those. Thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate that. Now, after the break, we find out more about the exciting initiative to recognise volunteers in Canterbury. CTV News and Weather, first at five. Be the first to find out about the rebuild, local politics, business, sports, culture and community. CTV News and Weather, first at five, only on CTV. Hi, I'm Caitlin, the naturopath here at Staywell Pharmacy. Working with the pharmacist, I use herbal and nutritional medicine to recommend natural alternatives for your health. This can be to counteract any side effects of your medication, general health advice, or natural options for you and your family. I'm also available for consultations. So come in and see us at Staywell Pharmacy. 27 Shand Road, Hornby. Staywell Pharmacy, live well, stay well. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Carpet Kingdom. At Carpet Kingdom we stock a massive range of carpets and we're also the largest vinyl stockers in the South Island. And not only do we have an excellent range in store, but you can purchase our stock online. We offer free measuring quotes, we have our own installation team, we ship nationwide, so come on down and see us at Carpet Kingdom. 312 Wilsons Road in Waltham, just off Bryham Street, or visit us online at carpetkingdom.co.nz. Christchurch has its very own enchanted utopia. The Hitching Post, pop in and see for yourself. A magical assortment of handmade creations, custom made candles and artwork. Choose from our huge range of water features, garden art and imported giftware. Specialists in handcrafted metal artwork made in store. Nestled on 722 Marshlands Road. The Hitching Post, defining art our way. Ready to go, mate? Flight leaves at 4.30. Relax, mate. We'll park at Airpark Canterbury. Airpark Canterbury, privately owned and operated with a free 24-7 shuttle service. Call 0800 Airpark or book online at airparkcanterbury.co.nz. The home show sale is on. Hi, Mike from Four Seasons. We have the largest range of gas and wood burners on display. All wood burners and gas fires are heavily reduced. Save up to $1,300 on fire and flu packages. The home show sale at Four Seasons Home and Leisure, Tower Junction Mega Centre. Hi, Rob Coat Williams. Join me with Rob's Country every Friday at 7.30 in the evening when I take you out of town and talk about anything this country. Rob's Country, Friday at 7.30. Welcome back. I'm joined now by Bridget Hearn and John Allen. Thank you both for coming in. Um, you know, there are so many people doing amazing things around Canterbury and you are one of them. There are volunteers in Canterbury doing all sorts of different things, but you've arranged it so that they can all come together, not just one group of volunteers, but a whole lot around Canterbury to come together for one event. What inspired you to to make that happen? Um, it was a, a conversation that uh, John and I had some months ago, um, Z Energy with their um, program Good in the Hood and support of um, a number of charities and, and volunteers in the community. 
and we were very keen to engage in, in some way and recognise all those people out there who um, do a marvellous job um, and volunteer their time and, and energy for organisations. So um, when you first decided to put this on, did you think, well, they're doing a lot for Canterbury already, let's do something for them? Absolutely, mm. and uh, I think it grew really, didn't it? It did, it kept growing. We, we started out with a smaller idea and then the idea of actually getting them to come along, so it was business, sport and community together um, to recognise the people that have actually done a lot of work over the last 12, 18 months in Christchurch, as well as some of the groups that um, we haven't been able to assist through our Good in the Hood programme in other ways. So by being able to recognise their volunteers and, and support people, by bringing them along to uh, a fantastic game uh, against the Northern Mystics. So, well, let's talk about that. That's that's what's going to happen. That all the people in the stands, well, quite a big chunk of them, are actually going to be those volunteers. But not just them. You've invited their families to come too. Is that right? Yes. So it's it's a wonderful opportunity for our volunteers to to come and see a great sport um, and to support um, you know, the homegrown team, um, uh, Netball Mainland, the EZO Tactics, um, a lot of the, the women who play in that team are all local, um, they've obviously come through netball centres which are predominantly um, run by volunteers as well, so um, we feel a real connection with um, the charities that are being supported and with, with netball as a support. So th this is being actually supported by, by yourselves but also from other business communities as well within Canterbury? Um, no, so it's a Z initiative with Mainland Tactics. So um, through our Good in the Hood programme the idea was to bring as many of the volunteer groups as we possibly could to support the Mainland Tactics in this game. Um, we wanted to fill the stadium. Really, that was the initiative. That's what we. That's what we decided to come up with. And, um, and but all the volunteers won't actually have to do anything except enjoy themselves. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. And I think that's what's really nicer about that. And also too, they may um, make some connections on the day with other volunteers and yes. find. You know, well, I've been volunteering for this. What have you been doing? And yeah. you know, and that that must be and nice it, too. And it's a, and it's a, a small way of recognising you know, the, the wonderful work that is done out there by our volunteers, you know, many of whom, um, they're not doing it for recognition, but it's nice to be able to give them something back. Yeah, mm. I think that's lovely that you've, you've thought of them to do that, and I'm sure that they'll enjoy going to such an event where they can really connect with, with each other. Yeah. And uh, we're looking for a win as well. We so. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Most importantly. <laughs> oh, sorry, I took that as well, a given. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Want to yes. beat those northern mystics. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I think we've got a pretty good chance. Um, do you think that the volunteering would increase if volunteers were recognised more often? Well, I would, I'd like to think so. I think that um, if you look across all of the Canterbury Volunteer Associations, they are struggling to get enough people to help them. And um, a lot of the recognition and people's lives have changed. Mm. Therefore, they're too busy to do some of those things. And, the rec and there's a lot of charities out there that need some help. Um, and it's difficult yes, for people to um, give up some time at the moment. And that's the basis of trying to recognise the work that they're actually doing. Um, one of the other things is we have volunteering Canterbury coming along um, and they'll be there on the, on the game day to talk about to anybody else that comes to the game what volunteering could be able to do on the day uh, or how people could volunteer their time. So they're coming along just to talk to A because they support a lot of the volunteer groups in Christchurch but also anybody else that's coming to the game if they wanted to be able to volunteer they're the organisation that could put them in touch with the type of thing that they may be interested in doing. Oh, so that's good. So apart from the actual game, they can find out other information about volunteering. Absolutely. Yes. It's, a, it's a way too of um, raising the profile of volunteering Canterbury and the work that they do in terms of supporting um, volunteers and, and bringing um, you know, people into organisations and volunteering their time. So. Um, we see that working with them is um, a really good thing as well. 
Yeah, I think it is too because I, I know um, people have said to me in Canterbury, well, I, I want to volunteer for something, but a, a little bit unsure where to go, yeah. how, you know, how to go about doing it. How much time it. they have to put into yep. it. That's what yes, makes yeah. people nervous. They, don't, yes. they might have an afternoon or a day, and in a lot of the um, organisations' cases, that's all they would really need um, just to give them that help. Yeah, well, it would be nice to know that, you know, during this event that people can find out more information about mm. that. What, what's um, one of the organisations, the volunteer organisations, that will be there on the day? Uh, well, there's Christchurch Women's Refuge, Aviva. Um, we have St John's, um, Girl Guides, um, Christchurch Men's Centre. Um, we have... Um, there's, there's 125 different charities oh, that's quite that are lot. actually mm -hmm. uh, represented um, from um, some charities where there's only a small group, like four or five people, um, right through to some of the large organisations where they well, have significant I, numbers. Well, I hope they um, have a wonderful time. I think this is fantastic. It's going to bring a lot of people together. So thank you for coming in to let us know. After huge. the break, Marcus Gibbs takes a look at Canterbury's Heritage Clocks. Every Saturday evening at 8 o'clock, we screen a riveting and educational documentary, ranging from history to music, culture to religion, and everything in between. Saturday night documentary, 8 o'clock, right here on CTV. It's Canterbury. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Action Removals, offering short or long-term storage facilities, full packing services, comprehensive rates, all fully insured and with six vehicle sizes to choose from. Earthquake Repairs, Action Removals, pack, move, store and return your valuable possessions stress-free. Action Removals, a family business that has been operating in Christchurch for over 10 years. Action Removals, your one-stop removal service on time, every time. 0800 222 526. Hurst Auto Dismantlers, your one-stop shop for all your mechanical and car part needs. Our huge premises boasts a large selection of mechanical parts, panels, tyres and glass. Most makes and models are available on site, and if we don't have it, our trusted staff will do their best to source what you need locally and nationwide. So come in and see the team, or just give us a call and save time and money. Hurst Auto Dismantlers, 343 0099. Arts 21 showcases the vast creative talent and minds that are making a name for themselves in Europe and beyond. Think outside the square with Arts 21, Monday morning at 10.30. February 22nd, 2011 is known as the day the ground shook, but it's also the day time stopped. For generations, people used these clocks to tell the time, but the earthquake left them broken and shattered. One of the more famous clocks was built into the Morehouse Avenue railway station tower. That building's gone now. It was demolished following the earthquakes. It was rather strange after the earthquake and the building was demolished to sort of drive over the overhead bridge at Colombo Street there and, and not see the building there because it was... It was a large, imposing building. But fans of the clock might recognise these two faces. Both are more than 120 years old and were salvaged during the building's demolition. Parts of the famous clock can now be found inside Quake City, an earthquake museum and restart mall. When you look up at the clock tower from, you know, seven floors down in a car, they don't look that impressive, but when you sort of look at them here up on the wall, they're pretty big clock faces. There's hope that Science Alive will use all four faces in the design of a new building if the organisation moves back into the city centre. Next time you're travelling down Ferry Road, you'll end up driving past this odd end shop. It's home to hundreds, if not thousands, of forgotten treasures. It's also where I found another old favourite clock, almost completely intact. The huge face used to sit on top of the MED building on the corner of Manchester and Armagh streets. It was once home to Orion before it was damaged in the earthquakes and demolished. 
As soon as he saw the clock, the owner of the Chaos Yard knew he had to save it. Well, it's just Manchester Street, MED building, Great Art Deco building, gone. You know, uh, it's just, just a wonderful piece of Art Deco, really. These two were visiting the shop in the hunt for a bargain and were shocked to find the massive clock. I think it's enormous. I think, yeah, it's a really neat piece. It's um, nice to preserve a bit of the past and uh, I think it's a, a very impressive clock. But why is a clock like this sitting at the back of a second hand stall with its hands frozen in time? Uh, well, I wanted to put it out the front, but unfortunately when we looked into it, because of its weight, possibly about three tonne, uh, they were talking about screw piles and uh, we're only a wee small business and we just can't afford to do it really. So instead it will sit at the back of the yard until a new home is found. Heritage consultant Jenny May has been working on all of the Christchurch City Council clocks. She hopes it will tick and tock once more. What's exciting is, is that you have found it and that gives the opportunity for maybe for it to be put on display somewhere or, and be recognised again. But while some clock towers may have been completely knocked down, others are still standing. Last year CTV News filmed the Edmund clock tower on Cambridge Terrace. This footage shows it sitting in several pieces while work was carried out. The man in charge of that repair work is also in charge of fixing dozens of broken clocks around the city. One of the more prominent ones sits at the top of the Victoria Street clock tower. I know this clock very well and it's great to have it going and having it timed and running very well. Uh, the challenge now is to get it uh, back to keeping good time and uh, these clocks don't like earthquakes. I've had a bit of trouble with the Brighton and uh, Sumner, they're a bit, still a bit erratic and trying to get the time right on them. Malcolm Lyle's clock mad. He's better known for his work as a Salwyn District Councillor, but today he's finishing the repairs to the Victoria Street clock. It's remarkable technology, last updated in the 1930s. Over the years I've been privileged to be able to work on these and of course now that uh, the Jens Clock Company went out of business in 1987, um, any parts we need I have to make, so that creates some interesting, uh, interesting conundrums at times. The Victoria Street clock is one of the city's most important icons. It was first built in the 1860s on the Provincial Council building site. After being dismantled and left in storage, it was rebuilt on the intersection of High, Litchfield and Manchester Streets. But due to traffic congestion, it was moved to the corner of Victoria and Salisbury Streets. Clocks like this are very much part of our history because they were often a thing that was built as a commemorative thing or a memorial thing. It's quite amazing to watch the repaired clock in action. This would be turning, pulling on these teeth, turning a drive gear here, running through these bevels and driving to the clock. Christchurch's clock towers might no longer have the same meaning they once had, but they're just as important today as they were a hundred odd years ago. These become historical monuments rather than uh, timepieces that everybody needed in the days you had to wind your watch. They're still useful though, at least for commuters, checking to make sure they're not late to work. Thank you for joining me. It's been lovely having your company. Now let's have a little sneak preview at what's happening in Christchurch and Canterbury. When you come down Rickerton Road, you're going to come across something very special. It is the Mate Cafe, right opposite the Bush Inn Centre. Plenty of parking out the back. What you'll find inside is something very special, something you want to have a look at, and we're going to show you right now. Let's go have a look. Here we are in the craft room. With me at the moment at the Mate Cafe is Justin, one of the owners. Now, Justin, this is an incredible place, so much going on. What's happening in here? Uh, what we're looking to give our community is a, a range of products which cut across things such as fabric, but we're also looking to giving them products such as haberdashery and notions so that they can fill their home with little treasures that will enable them to be able to make great crafting products uh, uh, for themselves and their families. Uh, but we also have an array of products um, in paper crafting and uh, baking as well, so we look to be able to make sure that our customers can walk away 
away here and make sure their family are well fed. The craft room is amazing. You've got so much going on here, sewing machines, bolts of cloth, people talking about different ways to create different fantastic things in their home. Mm. There's a craft room and of course in the middle and the cafe next door. With the cafe, looks like an amazing amount of good food. Yeah. Uh, we, we really are trying to appeal to people by being able to touch their palates in a way that they've never been touched before. I think the real key there is that we bring products with a difference. So not only do we have a delicious array of, uh, of lunch items and tea items for offer, we also have a number of delicacies which uh, I cut across things such as uh, uh, chocolate brownies. Mm. We have... Um, there's all sorts of stuff. I tell you what, I saw this tray walking around before with absolutely yummy things that people who just are working on crafts in the craft room can try and, 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 and give it a go. Mm. Now, hours wise, um, I know you're open from 9 o'clock in the morning right. to about 4.30 in the afternoon, That's except correct. for Thursday, yes. where you're open late. We do, we open late on Thursdays. We're really trying to get the community in here on Thursday nights. When we get a real buzz, it's absolutely amazing. Each of the rooms in this place fill up with people and we have people coming along to do craft groups, we have reading groups um, that come and critique books, uh, we have people doing uh, 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 bracelet making and, and necklace making, so we really have a, a real social element to our Thursday nights. Loads of courses to be done here, here at the Make Cafe, but of course Find you online is the best place? That's correct. What's that website called? www.themakecafe.co.nz Okay, we're going to go check out some of the rest of the Make Cafe. We'll be back with you just in a second. If you're lucky enough, you might catch the odd demonstration on the weekend at the craft area. This, today, is the Martha Stewart range where you can learn how to make these fantastic doilies. Imagine popping on down here and finding out how to do that special little item that you want for your home. The Make Cafe, fantastic place to come to. Craft room's great. Okay, so that's the craft room. Lots of great things going on in here. What's happening in the design room? Let's find out. Oh! <laughs> Kirsty, you're one of the uh, co-owners of the Make Cafe. There's a fantastic inspiration for starting this. Yeah, so we had an online store originally, and uh, we just started finding more and more people coming into our home, and we started building relationships with them. And we also went out to markets quite a lot. Um, and we just thought there was a need in Christchurch for um, more of a community place to gather. So we're open late, like on Thursday nights, um, and we just find that people love meeting new people and coming to craft. Well, you have created something really wonderful. It's the Make Cafe, Wicked and Road. We're in the design room, fantastic stuff. The Mate Cafe, 355 Rickerton Row, right opposite the Bush Inn. They've got the craft area, they've got the design area, they have a fantastic cafe where you can have yourself a great cup of coffee or something delicious from their range. And of course, if you want to check out their workshops, make sure you go to themakecafe.co.nz.